I'm Mike Costello, and I'd like to talk to you today about the problems of life. All of us have problems. It is a human condition that we deal with problems. As a matter of fact, as we talk in the next few minutes, I think you'll agree that having problems is even a sign of life. Because the more problems that we have sometimes, it seems the more alive we are. When we look at the problems that we face in human life, there are a couple of reasons that come to mind for our not being able to deal with those problems in a very positive way. Number one is we so often think that when we have a problem, there is no solution. And in fact, there is always a solution to every problem that we have in life. The second issue and, pro and dynamic that we deal with is that when we have a problem, when we face a difficulty, we often feel alone. And we feel that there isn't enough help. There is no help in the circumstance or situation. Perhaps in some of life's problems, we feel that there is help at hand in our spouse or our family or our ability to make a little more money. But we really feel that there's no great dynamic of help. And so we feel this feeling of uh, isolation and aloneness in the circumstance and situation of life. If you go back to the time when you were in school, uh, you remember learning mathematics or arithmetic, and I certainly do because math wasn't one of the subjects that I liked very much. And as I dealt with math problems, I would agonize and go through the problems. I would work through them, but I never really enjoyed them or liked them. But there are people who are really a whiz at mathematics. They enjoy numbers. They enjoy the problems. They're able to take the dynamic, the learning, the experience of mathematics, and they're able to lay out a huge problem and then go to work solving that problem. People in science are very much that way. We have people with wonderful, dynamic, intelligent minds fertile with ideas who are involved in science. And those people are dealing constantly with solving problems. The problems come to them. They're complex. And in the complexity of these problems, they immediately go to work developing the solutions. Sometimes the solutions take pages and pages, but they solve those problems. And when they solve that problem, it isn't that they've accomplished something monumental or great in their life, even though they have a feeling of great accomplishment. They're waiting then for another problem. And it is the solution, the resolution of those problems that allows the mathematician or the scientist to expand his or her consciousness and awareness and allows them to really have enthusiasm for life. One of the things that we know about the mathematician or the scientist as they deal with the problems that they solve and then allow others, invite others to bring them other problems is that they don't have any fear or doubt. They don't have fear that if they don't solve the problem, something terrible is going to happen. They don't have fear that there is no solution. They have no doubt that there is a solution. Perhaps they won't find it today or tomorrow. Perhaps they won't find it in their lifetime, but they know that there is a solution. And so the problem solving process for them becomes an invigorating pursuit. And the pursuit consumes them as they become deeper and deeper involved in the problem. The problem is still the problem, the mathematical problem, the scientific problem. It's still the problem. But in the midst of that problem, they see the fact that there's no need to fear and that there is a solution to that problem. So the two reasons that we talked about earlier for our difficulty in dealing with problems are absent in these circumstances. These people know there is a solution. Maybe they won't get it. They won't solve it. But they know there's a solution. And they also don't feel that they're alone. They know that if they don't solve the problem, someone else will. And the problem will have an answer. In dealing with our life problems sometimes, it's hard for us to have the same perspective. But if we had that perspective, if we had the perspective of viewing the problems and challenges of life just like the mathematician, just like the scientist, then we would deal with those circumstances and situations that come into our life in a totally different way. They may still be very difficult problems. They may still be perplexing. They may cause us great consternation and even pain and suffering mentally and physically in our lives. But they would become a dynamic part of allowing the problem solving to be the part of our life force that sustains us and invigorates us to deal with the experience we call life. 
If we deal with problems in this way, we need to begin to change the process of mind, the way that we think about problems. We need to view problems in life just like that mathematician, just like that scientist, that they are circumstances and situations that come and that there is a solution. We can do this by ordering the way that we think the dynamic of our mind, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, when it comes to dealing with life problems. And again, I want to say, every one of us have problems. Every one of us are going to have problems as long as we're in this physical state. And maybe some of us believe that some of those problems will even be present when we step out of this physical life into the next. So problem solving is a dynamic of life, both physical and spiritual. And the solving of problems allows us to open a new vista, a new window, a new vision of sight and understanding that we didn't have before. We need to begin the process of changing the way that we think about problems by accepting the fact that if we are in a problem situation, we have that problem. It is real. If you are sick, you are sick. There are people, especially in our movement, in the New Thought movement, who would tell us that if we would deny the reality of something, we can eliminate it. But what we believe is something more dynamic, and that is that if we deny the power of that over our life, then we begin the process of restoration. So that means that we begin by saying that we are where we are. If you are in a life situation that brings you ill health, you have ill health. If you are unhappy, you are unhappy. If you have limited resources, you have limited resources. And it is all right to accept the fact that that's where you are. And to begin the dynamic of solving your life problem through ordering the way that you think about the problems of life. One of the things that we are invited to do is to bless every problem. That may sound kind of crazy and certainly difficult for most of us. But as we grow in spiritual awareness and in the reality of the dynamic of mind science and mind intelligence and the dynamic of the conscious and subconscious mind, we know that as life problems present themselves, if we bless them, that is to simply say that this experience is here and we add the blessing of our mind and life to this problem or experience that a solution will be forthcoming and give it the blessing, not the resistance, not the fear, not the doubt, but to bless it. The next thing that we need to do is to give thanks for the problems of life. That too sounds a little crazy, but in reality, the problems of life give us opportunities to learn and to grow and to come to a new understanding of ourselves and a new understanding of the dimension of God's power in us. There is one place on planet Earth where there are no problems, where we believe there are no problems, and that place is in the cemetery. All of the people who are laying in the cemetery don't have the problem of physical life anymore. They don't have the problem of worrying about where they're going to live. They don't have the problem of worrying about relationships. They don't have the problem of worrying about income. But we don't necessarily at this point in our life experience want to be in that state. We don't want to be resident in the cemetery. We are called at this point to be in life, to live life. And so we need to give thanks for the fact that we have problems because the problems in life allow us opportunities to overcome, to grow, and to come to a new way of thinking. A totally different way of thinking about problems. A totally different way. Have you ever contemplated or truly thought about blessing your problems? Have you ever really thought about giving thanks for your problems? Maybe you've stated your problems and you probably have. So that's a step that's very important. But beyond stating the problems of your life, bless them give thanks for them, and then move on and stop feeding the negative influences. The negative influences of a problem are the influences that say that there is no solution, that you are totally alone, and that you'll never get out of this circumstance. As long as your mind is acting and reacting in that way, you will constantly feed the problem and you will not begin the process of solving the problem, going through the problem, and growing from the experience that you have. After we stop feeding the problem, we need to assert that there is a solution. 
we may not know the solution to any given problem at the moment or time in which we're facing it, but we need to know that there is a solution. Just like that mathematician, when he or she receives that piece of paper with the problem, just like that scientist, when they re, uh, receive the folder with the scientific problem, they know that there is a solution. They assert that there is a solution, and they go about the business of working through the problem to come to a solution. We need to know in the midst of the problems that we face in life that there is help and we're not alone. And we can know that because of who and what we are. Every one of us are children of God. God loves us all the same. He doesn't love the good people better than the bad people. He doesn't love the people in America better than the people in Thailand. God loves us all the same. God is no respecter of persons. We all have the ability to connect with divine intelligence, with the presence of God in our lives. So help is always at hand. Help in solving every problem is at hand because we are spiritual beings. And as spiritual beings, we have the ability to connect with divine mind that will guide and direct us. The kind of last step in the process of dealing with a change in the way that we think about problems in life is in the form of visualization, something that many of us are not accustomed to and that we don't do very often. We do visualize in a subconscious way. And unfortunately, most of us visualize through the subconscious in a negative way. And that is to say that our subconscious mind tells our conscious mind that the problem that we're facing is here, it is unsolvable, we are alone, and we're not going to be able to deal with it. And our conscious mind responds in like kind. But if we begin the process of conscious visualization, that is seeing the problem, stating the problem, blessing the problem, giving thanks for the problem, not feeding the negative aspect of that problem, but visualizing the fact that there is a solution. If it's a job situation, if you've lost a job, then visualize in your conscious mind the fact that you will have the job that you want and you need. See yourself in that circumstance. If you're in a point of chaos or turmoil in your life and that's the problem, see yourself in your conscious mind at peace, centered in that divine peace. If you need a new place to live, if you need a different car, if you need to overcome the negative influences that you have with someone, some other person, visualize yourself in the way that you wish to be. And as you visualize in your conscious mind, the subconscious mind will begin to absorb that which is present in the conscious mind, and the outpicturing will be visualizing in a positive and supportive way. You have problems, I have problems, we all have problems. That's never going to change. Problems are a part of the human condition. Some people deal beautifully with problems, sail through them, and are able to overcome them. Others allow the problems to defeat them, to beat them down, and to destroy them. We always have a choice, and we invite you to acknowledge the fact with us that problems are a part of human condition, and that if we change the way that we think about problems, state the problem, bless it, give thanks for it, stop feeding it, assert that there's a solution, and accept the fact that divine help is available, and visualize yourself solving the problem, your problems in life will be totally different in terms of the way that they affect your life. They may not be less, but they will affect you in a different way, and the dynamic of your mind and spirit will change. We believe in prayer, and we'd like to invite you at this moment to pause for a moment of reflection as we visualize together in the spirit. Eternal God, we gather together as your children, knowing that we all have problems, accepting the fact that problems are a human condition and that the problems that we experience are on the human level and that if we connect with the divine presence of your light, your power, and your mind, if we see ourselves strong and fulfilled in all of our life experiences, the problems that come will seek to strengthen us to empower us and to make us the strong children that you created us to be. We ask and pray these things in the name of faith, in the name of hope, in the name of love. Amen. That, those were wonderful pointers that you gave us and how comprehensive you were there. And I liked your visualization. Can you talk more about that? Well, visualization is something that most of us, especially Western uh, traditions, 
are just unaccustomed to, I think, from a metaphysical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint from the East, and in New Thought organizations such as ours, where we do participate in meditation, we may be a little more accustomed to visualization. But I think the visualization that I was talking about today goes beyond the visualization of meditation, yeah. but into the true visualization of our life problems as being solved and seeing them in a different way. Uh, an example of that is one of the things that I do outside of the church, and all of us support ourselves outside of the church, mm -hmm. is that I involve myself in, in real estate and uh, have invested in a variety of real estate projects. When I see a house or a building, it may be the most dilapidated, ugly building or the most terrible house, but what I see in that house or that building is what it can be. And then I set about the process of making it what I have seen it in my mind's eye to be. And that's the kind of visualization that we need in our lives. We need to see a problem, see a difficulty, and be able to visualize it the way that we think it should be, and then continually visualize that. And by using that technique of visualization, we're able to be creative and to create a solution. Visualization, too, and meditation mm -hmm. is very useful, as you know, Iris. Yeah. So uh, just to visualize, to face our problem and visualize the change that we wish to have come about, help start that change come about. It does. I think one caution that I would give that I didn't give in the talk is that once we visualize, we have to do something about yes. it. You, you can't simply visualize uh, a problem solved and not be uh, guided and directed yeah. to do something about it. If you lose your job and you want to sit in front of the television on the couch with, uh, with potato chips <laughs> and soda all day and wait for the job to come that you're visualizing, the likelihood is that you're not going to get the job but that you won't. want. God gives us the ability and he gives us the creativity and gives us the help that we need to do it. But we have to do it ourselves. He gives us the guidance, we do it. And the problems are really there as blessings in disguise. Now that sounds ridiculous, but uh, the problems allow us to stretch our spiritual muscle and also teach us a lot of lessons. If uh, in your life, in my life, and in everyone's life, if we didn't have the problems that we've had, we wouldn't have come as far as we have come. And I can't tell you how many people, and you've had the same experience I know in counseling with people, how many people will say, I never thought that I could endure that. Yes. I never thought I could have yes. gotten through it, but they do. Yes. And they say, I don't think I could endure such and such that someone else has had to endure, but then they always find that they can. And we, we know from our own personal experience, our personal experience as well as counseling, that we can endure whatever we need to endure. It's with the help of the inner that we do. Uh, keep on keeping on and there's so much more to the inner uh, God helps us in so many ways and one way is those who have died and gone on and I'll always be grateful to you for sharing that book by Dr. Garlish of Dr. Garlish's letters to his wife and it's a wonderful thing to know that those on the inner do come back and help us and he helped his wife so beautifully mm -hmm. Yes, that we have that constant help from the other side yes. and that that guidance and direction is always available to yes. us. One thing I found interesting with that uh, little booklet is that he said to his wife, I know that you're too sensitive to face um, too many, taking care of too much business in uh, the things that he left, uh, the churches that he left. And so uh, she needed to sell the churches to simplify her life because she was not she was too sensitive to that so he could see from the inner planes where her abilities were and what she could and couldn't do and then guided her in that way and we could all have that same guidance from someone because there's always those on the inner who are there to help us mm -hmm. the the problems in life sometimes are a little more than we need or can bear and so I think that spirit does guide us away from some problems in life and we're able to move into uh, the problems that we need to have yes. as learning experiences. To make the wise decision for our individual uh, problem, individual problem at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we can't make sweeping generalities of do this or do that, but just to face each problem as it comes individually. And I heard you saying that in your talk, essentially that to face each problem as it comes and then the solution will be there. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's important for us to remember that uh, that problems are a natural state of life. Yeah. You know, so often we believe, or people believe, that if they live a good life, if 
they behave properly, uh, if they're faithful to whatever teaching. Yeah. In our movements, often people will say, I don't understand why I'm sick because yeah. I'm so faithful to the teaching, or I don't understand why I have lack or, or uh, why I have this problem or that problem. But that has no bearing upon the, the actual reality of our faith. We're all visited by problems. Well, certainly, because we're here on earth to work through problems and to grow. And we wouldn't grow spiritually if we didn't have problems to face and to surmount or to stumble on and then uh, later on surmount because that's what life would be is all about, to, to work through our problems, to grow spiritually, to stretch spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, an important issue is what I talked about in terms of the mathematician or the scientist. There are people who really look for problems yes. and welcome problems. And perhaps we're not at a point of opening our arms to all of the world's <laughs> problems, but I think strong people are. Yes. Strong people in a spiritual and a physical sense are people who open their arms to problems. And, and certainly we have a multitude of organizations and volunteers and people who do seek out problems and try to do something about them. But on a personal level, we need to do the same. That's right. And we need to guide others to help themselves um, as they that God helps those who help themselves, but they can look for the organizations and groups that will help them. I know yesterday I spent the day at the Orthodontic Center here in Long Beach for the young children whose parents can't quite afford all the orthodontia help they need. And it's a wonderful thing to see those people helping themselves because they pay what they can afford to pay. And they bring their children in and the children are so wonderfully helped. Mm -hmm. And that's one example of what you were just saying. We have the organizations here to help people help themselves. But those parents have to make sure the children get there for their appointments on time and, and also pay on the sliding scale what they can afford to pay. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's a good example of how we are really helped. From the higher planes of being, if we just do our part, then we receive all the help that we ever need and ever could look for. Mm -hmm. We do indeed. And the, the situation you were just talking about with children was a very um, interesting example, I think, of how people deal with problems. So often uh, in our ministry, we deal with children who have, have passed into spirit. Yes. And one of the things that we all feel so helpless about is what do you say in a situation like that? And so often we just simply say, we don't know why, yes. but we know that this has happened. And so many parents of children who have passed into spirit will say, and of course in the memorial and funeral services, our point is always giving thanks for they're coming into this life and for what they gave. And giving thanks for a problem is something that, uh, large or small, certainly losing a child is yeah. a huge loss, a huge problem. But even in the small problems of life, giving thanks for what it brought and yeah. giving thanks for the experience of it. And I think that that turns the negatives into positives. Yes, it does. There's a poem about children's deaths. I'll give you for a little time this child of mine, he said to love and care for her while she lives and mourn for her when she's dead. And it goes on to say she'll leave her uh, the beauty to, uh, to cheer you on after she's gone. And that's the way life is, and that's the way problems are. There's always a residue of beauty, love, happiness, growth through, uh, as a result of any problem we might face. And, it's, and again, we just know that if we, have, if we don't have problems, we're not growing. So some of us might come into a life where we don't plan to grow that much. We just plan to be. But I can't imagine it being all that fruitful because we don't have the growth then. And growth is what our life is about, yeah. coming to know who and what we are. And those problems all empower us and strengthen us. Yes. And we're faced with the problems. We're faced with the uh, environment. I believe we choose our environment before we come in. We choose our parents. We choose our environment. We ch choose the things we're going to face. And so as we face those uh, obstacles, whatever they are, then we have the inner strength to meet them because we know in advance in our higher self that we're going to be facing those problems. So sometimes we think we can't uh, quite manage but we know that we can because we have the inner strength to have planned them in advance. And personally, I think that we plan our own life uh, graph before we come in with the help of a guardian angel and a lord or angel of karma. We plan what we're going to accomplish in a character growth for that lifetime. And then sometimes we get bogged down thinking we can't uh, quite handle what life gives us, but actually it's what we've asked for in 
to start with. And often, I think, in that process, we short circuit what we came here to do yeah. because of our inability to deal with the problems of life. Yeah. And I agree wholeheartedly. We come into this life experience with an agreement, if you will, on yeah. the other side that prepares us and accepts and creates what we need to experience in yeah. this lifetime. Yeah. If we but know that this is that we help help choose these circumstances, then I think it makes it easier because we realize then that the the it, if we if we have within us to make the plan, then we have within us to live the plan. And there's always a solution for every plan. And that's one of the important fundamental points, that there is a solution to every problem and that we're never alone. Right. And if we really feel and know the presence of God, then we know that we're never alone. And if we know in every life experience that there is a solution, and certainly if we believe we caused or created it or called it into being, we should know that there will be a solution. Yes. I just read another book recently, Letters from the Other Side by Harry and Helen, a brother and sister who talked with another sister here on earth. And they talked in the very same way that Dr. Garlish did about giving the family advice, but they were a little more universal in talking about what's happening on the inner planes. Mm -hmm. And what's happening on the inner uh, is influencing us constantly. Yes. And those angels that we talked about uh, yes. in past uh, uh, programs and in this program are guiding and directing us in wonderful ways. Yes. That divine presence is constantly available to us. And so as we face the problems of daily life, we need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are solutions, yeah. that the solutions are available, and that in the midst of having solutions to every problem, that we are never alone because we are children of God. And if we believe that there are solutions to life's problems and that we're not alone and that God is with us, then all we need to do is change the way that we think about problems. And then the problems become games, right. almost. <laughs> and so... We're happy to share with you these ideas for confident living, and we hope that they've been helpful to you. Reverend Freelander and I look forward to seeing you next time.